hello everybody as promised today i am going to deliver the lecture on bridge engineering and which is useful for all competitive type of examinations as well as diploma and degree examinations my first chapter is bridge terminology and classification what is the bridge bridge is the structure which closes the gap or it may be defined as the drainage structure which facilitates a communication route for carrying road or railway traffic across an obstruction or a depression with or without water this is the bridge which shows the river also and which shows the road also this is the river and this is the communication route then we define the length of the bridge the length of the bridge it is measured along the center line of a bridge from end to end of bridge deck this is one end of bridge deck this is another end of bridge deck and this is the center line of the deck bridge then this length is termed as a length of bridge which is self explanatory in figure number 1 then what is the span of bridge the span of the bridge is the center to center distance between any two adjacent support to adjacent support may be one abutment one pier or it is the distance between the two piers of a bridge superstructure is called as a span or effective span what is the clear span the clear distance between adjacent support of a bridge superstructure i will explain in the figure also what is the total span the center to center distance between abutment of a bridge is called as a total span and what is the economic span this is another different term and very important and important also exam from examination point of view the span for which the total cost of bridge is minimum is the economic span of bridge this is the figure which showing the cross section of a bridge and this end support is called as a abutment this is also a abutment and intermediate supports are called as a pier then what is the clear span it is the clear distance between two adjacent support this or this this are the clear span what is the span or effective span this is the central to central distance between two adjacent supports and what is the total span it is the central to central distance between the two abutments means two end supports okay so this figure is self explanatory to describe the various spans of bridges then we will go and let us see what is the waterway the sectional area at the site of bridge through which water flows is termed as a waterway there are three different types of the waterway first is the natural waterway second is the artificial waterway and linear waterway what is the natural waterway the unobstructed sectional area available at the bridge site for the flow of water means before construction of bridge then what is artificial waterway the sectional area provided under the bridge superstructure through which water flows means it is the waterway after construction of bridge and linear waterway it is the linear measurement of waterway along the bridge and it is the equal to sum of all clear spans of the bridge and i already explain the clear span on the figure also this is the figure number 3 which shows the waterway okay this is the river or stream these are the banks this is the bridge site and this area this sectional area through which water flows is called as a waterway then we define the score what is the score the vertical cutting of a river bed is called as a score and the maximum depth of score is considered for design of foundation of piers and abutments then another important term is the afflux what is the afflux the heading up of a water above its normal level while passing under the bridge is called as afflux or it is also defined as it is the level difference between the upstream side and downstream side of the bridge okay look at this figure this is the bridge this is the upstream side this is the downstream side and the level difference between upstream side and downstream is called as afflux if upstream side depth is du downstream side depth is dd and if afflux is termed as ha then ha is equal to du minus dd this is the afflux and 
ड्यू टू वेलॉसिटी और करंट्स ऑफ वॉटर देर इज वर्टिकल कटिंग ऑफ अ रिवर बेड दिस वर्टिकल कटिंग ऑफ अ रिवर बेड इज टर्म्ड एज ए स्कोर विच इज एक्सप्लेन इन दिस फिगर नंबर फोर देन वी डिस्कस अबाउट फ्री बोर्ड और डिफाइन फ्री बोर्ड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन हाइएस्ट फ्लड लेवल एंड लोएस्ट पॉइंट ऑफ ब्रिज सुपर स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड एज अ फ्री बोर्ड देन नेक्स्ट टर्म इज अ क्लियरेंस द मिनिमम डिस्टन्स बिटवीन द बाउंड्रीज एट द स्पेसिफाइड पॉइंट ऑफ द ब्रिज स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड एज अ क्लियरेंस द क्लियरेंस माइट बी अ हॉरिजोंटल इट मे बी अ वर्टिकल देन वॉट इज द हाइएस्ट फ्लड लेवल हाइएस्ट फ्लड लेवल इज द लेवल रेकॉर्डेड ड्यूरिंग द फ्लड और रिकॉर्डेड ड्यूरिंग द हाइएस्ट फ्लड और कैलकुलेटेड ड्यूरिंग द हाइएस्ट फ्लड विच इज टर्म्ड एज अ एच एफ एल वॉट इज लो वॉटर लेवल द लेवल ऑफ वॉटर सर्फेस इन अ रिवर इन ड्राई सीजन इज लो वॉटर लेवल एंड नव डेज द ड्राई वॉटर लेवल इज ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल टू द लो वॉटर लेवल इज ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल इक्वल टू द रिवर बेड ओके दिस इज द क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ द ब्रिज एंड दिस इज दिस एंड सपोर्ट्स आर टर्म एज ए अबर्टमेंट्स दीज आर द एप्रोचेस ऑफ द ब्रिजेस एंड वॉट इज द फ्री बोल्ड that is the difference between hfl and lowest point of bridge superstructure which is termed as hfl this might be a low water level lwl or sometimes it is equal to river bed also level of river bed okay then we classified this this is the important question sometimes asked in descriptive type of examination for the degree as well as for diploma what are the different types of bridges or what is the classification of how you classify the bridges then there is one simple term you must remember that l cube pm sub h means hai pm sub hai aapko to pata hai pm sab kuch hota hai aur l cube you must remember what is l cube l means life l means loading l means length what is p p means purpose what is m m means material what is sub s means structural form a means alignment b means bridge floor and what is h h means hfl that is l cube pm sub h then what is first l l is according to life it may be defined as a temporary or permanent l means loading it may be a class a bridge class a bridge or class b bridge for light to for heavier to light loading according to span length it might be defined as a culvert minor bridge major bridge and long span bridge according to p that is purpose it might be aqueduct viaduct grade separation foot bridge highway bridge or railway bridge according to material used for construction timber masonry it may be iron or steel it may be rcc it may be pre stressed concrete according to structural form it may be a beam type it may be a arch type it may be a suspension type according to alignment straight or square alignment and then skew alignment according to level of bridge of floor that is deck bridge through bridge or semi through bridge and according to highest flood level it is submersible bridge or it may be a non submersible bridge so we will go elaborately according to life temporary bridges that is first l what is temporary bridge the bridges which are used in urgency and adopted when the resources are not sufficient and funds are short then we can classify the temporary bridges as a causeways the causeways may be causeways may be flush or metal deep it may be a low level or irish second classification of temporary bridges are material used up for construction that is timber it may be a timber trestle timber pile bent crib or a crate or timber cantilever bridges also then suspension bridges it may be a ram type trestle type or sling type flying bridges floating bridges boat bridges pontoon bridges or raft bridges okay then permanent bridges the bridges which are constructed for long periods and resources available are sufficient and there is no laxity of fund which is very important different types of permanent bridges are foot bridge highway bridge railway bridge rcc bridge pre stressed concrete bridges and all type of major and long span bridges okay then according to loading class a loading for heavy loading as decided by irc that is indian road congress 
class A bridge for medium loading and class B for the light loading. According to span length, culvert, minor bridge, major bridge and long span bridge. Culvert, the bridge having total length less than 6 or sometimes it may be 8 is called as a culvert. The bridge having total length less than 30 meter is called as a minor bridge. The bridge having span varying between 30 to 120 meter is called as a major bridge. And the bridge having total length more than 120 meter is called as a long span bridge, which is very important and asked in the examination. Okay. According to purpose, this is the aqueduct structure which is constructed to carry canal water over drainage. If this is the drainage water, and we must use this type of structure to carry canal water over drainage. Such a structures are called as aqueduct. Okay. In viaduct, the bridge structures are which are constructed over a deep valley without perennial water. Look at this photograph. This is the deep valley. This is the deep valley. There is no permanent or no perennial water. And this is the bridge which is constructed to carry the railway, which is called as a viaduct. Then according to purpose, next classification is grade separation. The bridge which is constructed when the road crosses another road at different level is called as a grade separation look at this figure very difficult and complicated grade separation is here then according to purpose foot bridge the bridge which is exclusively used for carrying pedestrians sometimes cycles and animals across any depression or obstruction is called as a foot bridge this is the foot bridge which is under construction okay because there is no floor provided at the bottom or top okay According to purpose, if the bridge is constructed over a highway, it is called as a highway bridge. If bridge is constructed to carry the railway, this bridge is called as a railway bridge. And according to material used for construction, the bridge may be a timber bridge, it may be an iron or steel bridge, it may be a masonry brick, masonry bridge, stone or brick masonry, RCC bridge or pre-stressed concrete. And pre-stressed concrete material is used for bridge nowadays because of light and slender section according to alignment the bridges are classified as a straight or square alignment bridges the communication route crosses stream at right angle this alignment is always preferred because of two points are there first is the minimum length of bridge and second is the minimum obstruction to the flowing water this is the center line of a stream and this is the center line of the road and the crossing is at right angle means 90 degrees okay according to alignment second classification is clue alignment skew alignment is the communication route crosses the stream other than right angle is called as a skew alignment and it is generally avoided because more length is required and more obstruction to the water obviously according to position of level of bridge floor the bridges are classified as a deck bridge, semi-through bridge and through bridge. For deck bridge, the bridge having its floor supported at the top of superstructure. Semi-through bridge, the bridge having its floor supported at some intermediate level of superstructure. And the bridge having flow, its floor supported at the bottom of superstructure is called as a through bridge. Look this simple figure. Look at this simple figure. This is the deck, this is the semi-through bridge and this is the through bridge, okay. Because floor is supported at the top of superstructure means deck, floor is supported at intermediate level of superstructure is semi-through and floor is supported at the bottom of superstructure is through type of bridges, okay. According to HFL, bridges are classified as a submersible bridges and non-submersible bridges. Submersible bridges are constructed over less important roads and for PMJSY schemes on village roads or district roads and this term is important. The bridge which allows the HFL to pass over its superstructure thereby submerging the communication route is known as a submersible bridge or it may be termed as a low level bridge and it not to cause the interruption to traffic six times in a year and not more than three days at a time constructed over 
unimportant routes and sufficient funds are not available then interruption what is the maximum interruption in days that is not it is interruption to traffic not more not more than 6 means it is 5 and 3 days at a time means 3 means the interruption in days is 15 days non submersible bridges the bridge does not allow the high flood water to pass over its floor carrying communication route is called non submersible bridges or it must be termed as a high level bridges or permanent bridges these bridges are constructed or important routes where funds are sufficiently available or the bridges having its parapet in the form of ms railing are the temporary bridges or submersible bridges not temporary but these are submersible bridges and the bridges whose parapet is constructed with concretes are permanent bridges this is the some visual difference according to hfl third classification is the causeways the bridge having its floor flush or little above the bed of the stream which allows the flood water to pass over its floor carrying the communication route is called as a causeway causeway the road and the river bed are practically at the same level okay so what are the different factors or choice between the different types of bridges what are the different types of factors to be considered first is the nature of stream second is the bed condition of river or a stream the nature of stream may be it may be a perennial non perennial the bed condition the stream bed may be alluvial it may be a silty or other type of beds the nature and volume of traffic means the uh, the road communication route may be a village road may be a national highway navigation in river if there is a navigation in river we have to provide the different type of structural form which allows the more free board then hydraulic and climatic data the length and width of the bridge physical features and geological condition of the site the live load and other type of loads acting on the bridge availability of resources and strategic economical and aesthetical considerations and last but not least which is very important political considerations must be there to decide the type of bridge or decide the location of bridge then choice between deck bridge and through bridge deck bridges are laterally rigid and structurally more stable through bridges laterally flexible and structurally unstable deck bridges economical for lighter loads and small span through bridges economical for heavier loads and long span deck bridges difficult for construction maintenance and inspection through bridges are easier for construction maintenance and inspection then comparison between submersible bridge and non submersible bridge submersible bridges are cheaper non submersible bridges are costly submersible bridges are non permanent or temporary non submersible bridges are permanent submersible bridges constructed over a stream which has low flood discharge non submersible bridges are constructed over a stream carrying heavy flood discharge submersible bridges blockage of traffic is there non submersible bridges no blockage of traffic or uns unobstructed traffic submersible bridges provided over the village roads or district roads where laxity of fund is there non submersible bridges are constructed where there is a plenty of fund generally used for state and national highways okay then another important descriptive question occurred in the examination that what are the different factors affecting the location of bridge i will go very fastly you must remember these points first point to decide the location of bridge is the center line of the proposed road second is greatest security to the foundation third is straight or square alignment straight reach of a stream or a river high permanent bank should be there at the approaches of the bridges sharp curves and steep gradient should be avoided why it is avoided because to avoid the accident spot development of accident spot is there and to avoid the accident we avoid the sharp curve and steep gradients at the approaches the velocity of a stream should not score the beds there should not be serious cross currents or whirls in the stream or a river bridge constructed 
bridge construction material must be available means availability of resources must be there there should be a minimum work under water well defined narrow channel or a stream absence of costly river training works minimum obstruction to the waterways it should be away from large size tributaries sufficient free board is available for navigation purpose if required and by considering above factors least objectionable site should be selected by experienced engineer so experience counts here okay then this is some objective type or multiple choice questions which might be asked in various type of competitive examinations okay the first question is a culvert having total length less than 1 meter is called as a vent way okay this is the correct option the heading up of water above its normal level while passing under the bridge is called as a afflux is the correct option free board clearance and score are not correct then the bridge having its floor supported at the top of superstructure or top of structure is called as a deck bridge okay then the end support of a bridge superstructure is termed as a abutment it is not termed as a pier or retaining wall or abutment pier then next is the central to central distance between any two adjacent supports of the bridge is called as a span or effective span it is not a total span clear span or economic span then the alignment of a bridge as far as possible should be straight or square it should not be a skew or curved or parabolic the difference between hfl and lowest point of superstructure is called as a free board very simple the drainage structure provided over dry or lying valley is called as a viaduct it is not aqueduct cause we are a vent way the waterway at the bridge side should be least obstructed so as to avoid the afflux these are some multiple choice questions which which might occur in the competitive type of examination and if you want more details for more details or notes you may please contact our administrator his phone number is here you may take screenshot and may call him and my email id is svkulkarni72 at the rate gmail.com and thanks everybody for listening my this first lecture thank you thanks everybody धन्यवाद सबका धन्यवाद गुड नाइट ओके बाय